We had our ribbon cutting on July 8th, and I was so proud that our county councilman came, John Weinstein, our county executive, Alan Kittleman, and my schoolmate, Senator Ben Cardin, showed up. It was so great. Everybody came. It was wonderful. And I had not quite a year of enjoying that store and loving every bit about it. Every time we would do something or make it nicer, I'd say, oh my God, I just love this. And then, believe it or not, there was a flood warning the weekend before Memorial Weekend. And Gary and Bud and me, and we had to get a U-Haul van and my three trucks. We loaded everything out of the store. I mean, all the furniture, I mean, big, heavy furniture, moved it all out to a safe place because there was supposed to be a flood that weekend or that during that weekend. Okay, there was no flood. We brought it all back on that, starting that Sunday. And when I say we cleaned every pane of glass in every showcase, the store was sparkling. It was better than ever. Thank God I took pictures because I was so proud. And we had one full day of business that Saturday and then Sunday. I mean, yeah, Sunday was the flood. And it started to look like it wasn't going to stop. And I said, Gary, if nothing else, just move that one bar, that one piece of furniture that the guys paid for already. It was like over $800. And let's, let's leave. We have to, we're supposed to deliver it on that Thursday. I said, just move that out of the way. Well, no sooner than he moved that piece, the water just started coming in. I mean, literally coming in from the front door that we saw at first and fast. I went to the back of the building and noticed water was starting to come under the door that was dividing the two businesses. And that door was locked. It had a deadbolt. I went back to the front of the building and also noticed that water was coming under our main entrance. I stood there for a, mo a moment and tried to collect my thoughts. I thought this is becoming a very serious situation and we really do need to get out. So I said to Joan Eve, I said, uh, please collect your belongings, get that boot off of your foot. And I will mention that she was wearing a boot for a double stress fracture on her foot. And I said, you've got to get that off. And I said, we've got to get out of here. Gary said, we got to get out. We got to get out of here because Joni, we just got to get out. I mean, he was determined. Get your things, get your things together. And meanwhile, the water was coming in more and more and I'm trying to figure out what to do. I was wearing a boot. I had a couple stress fractures in my right foot from that other week of putting all the furniture in and out. And I had this boot and he said, Joni, take the boot off. Take the boot off, put your regular shoe on and get your things together. And as I'm thinking about the, sh the shop filling up like an aquarium, I was wondering if there would be anything to hold on to. And knowing that in her last business, a white SUV had come through the front window and everything in the store was flushed out. And I was just thinking, I pray to God that the cars that are floating by do not come into the window of the of the shop. So what did I take? I took a pocketbook and stuck it in a plastic bag. I took um, the inventory bag with the inventory and I took the bills out of the cash box and put them in with the inventory. Gary said, come on, we got to get out of here. Meanwhile, he's walking back again to see about the door in the back. Forget it. The front door, he went to the front door and he couldn't get it open. I mean, he couldn't get the door open. The pressure of the water outside the door wouldn't allow him to open the door. Things started to crash in the store. It was, it was almost surreal. Um, I look back and I think it was, in a sense, almost like a movie set where things were starting almost like dominoes to fall around us. It, it started at the back left entrance or, or exit up to the building. Um, a, part, a portion of the wall blew out from the pressure of the water that had developed in the back part of the building. And the showcases, one after another, came crashing down. And he said, come on, Joni, we, we, gotta, we gotta get out of here. And, and I'm walking up to with it where he is, and the showcases from the back had already fallen down, which I didn't even realize how bad that was. But then another tall one came forward, and then we're both standing at the door, and down comes the big six-foot-tall, six-foot-wide glass showcase. 
I mean, I don't think it was a foot and a half behind me where it fell. It was so scary because we saw it on a video afterwards. So I moved back to the front entrance as the floor beneath my feet began to buckle. And I realized that the Tiber River was indeed coming through the floor. So we went up to the, I went up to the front of the building and um, I saw on the street two cars floating past. And I was shocked at how quickly the water rose. It was less than two to three minutes that it went from just coming over the sidewalk to about thigh high. Gary was so smart. I mean, I don't think I would have had the wherewithal if I had been there by myself to think it through how to get out and where to go. Gary had a plan. He took the antique candlestick phone off the switchboard. We had an old switchboard in the store. And he broke through that glass on the top part of our door and he cleared it. The first, first hit was it, it was safety glass, so it just shattered. With the second hit, he was going around getting all the glass from around the inside of the frame. I said to her, I need you to hold on as, as tight as you can and do not let go. We had no idea what was around the corner of the building, but I did know that I had to cross the very river that was raging beneath the building. He said, come on, now you, Joni, you hold on to me as tight as you can and don't let go. I'm not gonna lose you, you stay with me. He went through the door first, the glass, and then he pulled me through. At that time, I probably lost that one bag that had all the inventory and the cash bills but I had my purse and the boot, that stupid boot. <laughs> and then he said, just hold tight. And his plan was to go to the right and make another right and go across the Tiber Bridge. There were railings on either side of the bridge so we could hold with our right hands the, the railings. And I'm holding him with my left hand around his waist. Really, actually, he had me on his back, basically. So the water is rising and it was eventually up to our necks. And I looked ahead and I saw the brick column that had the very last railing um, had started to move a bit. And I also noticed that the last railing was already partially detached from that column. And I thought if that railing goes, I have nothing else to hold on to. So I got to that railing and I pulled and suddenly I hear Joni say, Gary, what's wrong? I couldn't move. And there were times when he could barely move. I mean, the, the water current was so strong and it was getting higher and higher. And all of a sudden, and by the way, going back to in the store, I said to Gary, I don't want to drown in my store. And then when we're on the bridge, the fence started to give way, the, the railing. And I said, Gary, we're, the fence is giving way. We're going to end up in the Tiber. We're going to drown. I was completely paralyzed by the strength of the water, which was literally up to our necks. He said, Joni, just hold on. Just hold on. He could barely move. Howard County 911. Yes, there are two people stuck on Tiber River, uh, right on the river where the bridge goes across the main street. They're trying to walk through. The, the water's almost above their head. Right at Tiber River and Main Street, Ellicott City. Okay, it's 8054 Main Street is the address. 8054? Right, and there's two people trying to, to get out, and they're, they're almost above their heads across the Tiber River and Main Street. Are they trying to walk across Main Street or walk across that bridge there? They're trying to walk across the bridge from Main Street to Tiber River. It's a woman in a red sweater and a, and a man. And then he got to that brick pillar that's at the end of that fence, and the pillar was actually moving and it's slippery, and he's trying to get around the pillar. And I, I don't know where the strength came from, but I managed to pull, and the railing, thank God, managed to remain attached to the column. And we got around the corner, and thank God, the current on the back side of the building was not as strong. On the bridge, the water was coming up, actually in our faces, we, we were keeping our necks like this. My neck was sore from keeping my neck like this so we wouldn't swallow any of the water. And we got around and thank God for the deck on the back apartment of the building that we were in. And that was Gary's plan and he made it and we got up on that deck and we hugged 
and we kissed and we said, oh my God, we made it, we're alive. We were standing there shivering cold because I have to say the water was very cold and we were both covered in mud and we looked at each other and I remember Joni saying to me, we made it, we're still alive and this must not be our time yet. And that is honestly, as much as I can actually say without crying because I've never felt so close to death. I didn't know what was gonna happen. We didn't know if we'd ever get out of there. The water was coming up, even on the steps to get to the deck. So we had no idea what was really gonna happen, but we were together. And I thank God to this day that Gary was with me because he saved my life.